Hi friends, happy holidays. Just want to give you an update on our holiday schedule. Our hours will be limited until January 4th. Then we'll go back to business as usual, Tuesday through Friday, 11 to 5 and Saturday noon to 4. For now, we'll only be open December 21st, 22nd, 28th, and 29th. Those are Tuesdays and Wednesdays. We're going to party it up for Christmas and New Year's, and then we'll be back to shop and play dress up. See you soon. Enjoy the video peek. Hi friends, welcome back to the video peak. I'm your stylist, Shauna Rose, and we've got some fabulous new clothes. Look at the sleeves. I believe this is called a fleur de lis. Did I get that right? <laughs> I love this. It's so beautiful. Just it's like an energetic, flowy, feminine, sexy. I love it. <laughs> this fabric is so yummy and cozy. So let's say these sleeves are too long for you. This is a really easy sleeve to do a hem on because it's not going to interfere with all of this embellishment. So that's wonderful. Look at this pretty necklace I put with it. It's got the silver and the brass and the sparkly glass beads. And look at that pretty little, reminds me of like some lamps that my grandma had when I was growing up. I love that nostalgic vibe. And I think it goes really pretty with the embellishment. Threw on these fun little earrings that also have these mixed metals. I think it's pretty cute together. We've got an A-line on the bodice and we've got an A-line on the sleeve. If you want to wear this a little tighter, just grab it, tie a knot. That's such a great way to hide the tummy, right? Because sometimes these fabrics will lay where you can see all the bumps of your jeans, or let's see, pull up my tummy. You've got a little tummy, you can see this going on. <laughs> so if that's happening and when you're leaning back, you can see it, just tie a knot in your top. And then all of the wrinkles that are happening from that knot will distract all of it. Oh yeah, that's right. The queen of camouflage is in the house. So you guys all think I'm perfect. It's only because I'm the queen of camouflage. <laughs> My favorite thing about this top, besides the fact that it's super comfy, are these sleeves. Cuteness. Don't you love that? The tie dye, the fabric, this is just so comfy. I didn't even realize that this background color is like a little bit lavender. That's pretty fun. The black and brown combo is so easy because we all have black and brown boots and shoes. So it makes it really simple and easy to throw together an outfit. Should we try it with a belt? Since I have on a black boot, I'm gonna throw on a black belt. Cute, huh? So I threw on this fun little necklace to kind of bring up more of the black for the whole black boot look. And then I threw on these fun little earrings because they have some black and brown in them. The earrings are gold and the belt is silver. And you didn't even notice, did you? Because those details are not that important. So don't be afraid to mix and match your metals, to wear colors that are not exactly the right match. We don't have to do that anymore. I am really in love with this top. Oh, I want them all. <laughs> I'm going to end up taking all of them and you guys aren't going to get any. I have to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> so the colors in this top are everything to me. I'm really attracted to green and this green is just vibrant and happy and fun. Again, stretchy, comfy, easy to wear fabric and party in the back. <laughs> it's so cute, right? So I just have on a little kind of bralette, but for people that don't want to show off too much skin, just throw on a tank top or a cami. So much easier to wear when you have a cami underneath. And now we're wearing it backwards. Pretty fabulous, right? 
It's like you have two tops in one. So cute. Remember, if you want to cover the cupcakes or the Stargate, just wear a longer layer underneath. I have a slip tank on and it is folded to look like a cami, but if I wanted more coverage, I would just pull it longer. Remember not to pull it too long, just long enough to cover what we need. And if you're feeling really poochy, throw on a belt. So I have it sitting underneath in the back and then showing in the front. And look how fun this little necklace is. Isn't that adorbs? And then this little earring with green. Just so much fun. This necklace is super cool because it's long enough that you can wrap it around three times. Look how fun that looks. So cute. My daughter has one and whenever she wears it, I'm like, you got that for me? That is so cute. I am good. <laughs> I have two more in, so if you want one, they're here. There's no one way to do it. You get to decide what you like, what you need. What does your body need? What does your spirit need? You get to decide. I had to have this blouse for us. Check it out. Linen-like fabric. The stripes are going in the right direction. We've got this floral rayon, patches of lace, raw edges. I mean, just adorable. I have it closed right now, but I still have on that brown slip tank and I thought, what if we wore it open like a jacket? What if we add a belt? What if we wear the belt on the outside? Here I'm wearing it low on my hips, but what if we wore it high on our waist? So cute. You get to decide how it works best for your body type pop that collar. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, it is a dolman cut sleeve, which means there's no structure here under the arm. So it's all mystery under here. The sleeve is kind of short and it has a button. It's a fitted button, meaning once you close it, it's nice and fitted around the wrist. So if it's too tight or you just prefer a three quarter sleeve, roll them up. It also comes in a blue combo. How beautiful is that? I was really torn between throwing a white cami, a nude cami, or this peachy coral cami. And I went with the brighter color because sometimes that's just more fun. And I do feel that it picks up from these little flowers. So how cute is that? And you know what else we didn't do? We forgot to tie it up. So let's see what happens if we tie it up. It just seems like anything goes with this blouse. So cute. Don't you just have to have one? I mean, spring is the next season coming up. So this is gonna be perfect going into spring and summer. Chances are you might be vacationing somewhere where it's warm. This is also going to be great for those vacation spots. I fell in love with this top the first time I saw it. I wasn't sure if it was right for the season because I was thinking, wait, do I get more dark colors? and blacks and reds and then I realized like who cares I want this top I'm getting it so here it is we got it I brought it in for us because it is so cute so this fabric is thin which is not so great when it comes to the angel wings or the muffin top but a vest is a great solution for that so if you have one use it or just wear it and not care. By the way, ladies, I was talking to one of my customers. Hi, Trina. She's apologizing for something. And I was like saying, hey, you know what you just reminded me of? We should stop apologizing. Instead of apologizing, instead of saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, when it's not really necessary, let's practice saying thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for being there for me. Let's try it. 
I got that advice a while ago and I applied it for a little bit, but then I forgot. We need reminders. So let's help remind each other when one of us is saying sorry for something that really they don't need to be saying sorry for, just remind them no need for sorry. Instead, just say thank you. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for being there for me. I would like to address the inflation, the rising cost of goods that I'm dealing with. I'm going out shopping and the things that I'm buying, including our yoga pants, the prices are going up noticeably. So my markup is not going up, but the cost of goods are. Just know that I'm doing my best to bring you really cool items at fair prices. I do branch out from time to time and shop with more expensive designers like the cut velvets and the beading and the tie dyes with the extra fabric. Those pieces are from a higher end designer. They're costing me more, so they're going to cost you more. I do have, you know, earrings that are $10, necklaces that are $20. I have my cherished collection where most things are $20, $29. The fabulous pieces are usually $49 or $59. Pieces that would normally cost you over $100, anywhere from $100 to $200, you're going to get for $49 or $59. So I definitely have pieces in here for you if you can't afford the more expensive things. So doing my best to take care of everybody out there. If you have any special requests, please feel free to email. I'm always open to hearing your feedback. Hi friends, welcome back to another self-love pep talk. Are you stretching? Are you breathing? Are you drinking water? Are you taking in healthy foods? I hope you're doing these things. These are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to self-love. Self-love has so much to do with what's going on up here and what's going on in here. Self-love has everything to do with commitment. You have to be the best parent you could ever possibly be to yourself. <laughs> That's really self-love. Self-love is not just about what we say. It's about what we do and how often we do it. It's about staying committed. It's about being dedicated to loving yourself fully with grace and compassion so that you can do that for others without even having to think about it. By creating new habits, we create deeper grooves in our brain called neuropathways. And what we do and what we say and how we act and how we feel will just become who we are because we've created these neuropathways, right? It's like a train. It's pretty hard to stop that train and turn it around. You can't just stop it on a dime and turn it around. Just like making the changes in our life don't happen overnight. It is a process. If you want to stop a train, it's going to have to break for quite a long time before it actually comes to a complete stop. And then once it starts going the opposite direction, it's going to take a while before it builds up momentum again. It's the same with continuing our self-love process. It's the same with stopping old habits and starting new habits. Please remember that it doesn't happen overnight, that it takes time, effort, commitment, dedication. It takes making mistakes and not letting that stop us. Like get knocked down, stay down for a minute, think about why or how you got knocked down. And then when you're ready to apply those changes, get back up and try again. I've heard it said before that the master has failed more times than the student has ever tried. <laughs> so when you've tried and tried and tried, that's when you'll finally become a master of yourself because that's ultimately what we're trying to master. We're trying to master ourselves. And lately I've been thinking about how much responsibility we have individually to control how we think, how we feel, how we react, how we behave. Even when other people are not loving themselves and therefore unable to love us, even in those challenging moments, we are able to exhibit love we are able to come from a place of like, oh, I'm getting triggered, but I've been down this road before and I know how to handle this. 
Have you ever noticed that when somebody's triggering you, a lot of times it's because they are triggered? That happens to me more often than not. When somebody that I love and I'm dealing with is triggering me, it's usually because they've been triggered. When I'm being triggered, I immediately go into this what about me mode. It's like I go right into victim mode. Like, what about me? I'm hurting. This is how I'm feeling. I want you to understand me. Okay, so that's understandable. We all do that. But at what point in our self-love journey do we start holding ourselves accountable for recognizing that we've gone into the what about me mode and being able to put that aside and just be there for the other person who's being triggered. Just be there for them. I know that the only way that I can be a better me is by focusing on what I can change. I can't change the other person, but I can change me. My new practice is self-soothing. When I get triggered, when I feel misunderstood, when I feel something unfair is happening, I ask myself, are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. <laughs> are you hurting? Are you upset? Are you scared? Are you angry? Are you fearful? Yes, I'm feeling some or all of these emotions. Are your emotions valid? Yes, my emotions are valid. Is it anybody else's responsibility to manage your emotions? No, it is not. Even if you think that they are the reason you're feeling the way you're feeling, it is still not their responsibility to manage your emotions. It's still, still my responsibility to manage my emotions, no matter what they have done to trigger these emotions in me. When I ask myself these questions, I'm able to calm down. I'm able to come back to my center. I'm able to realize that, you know what, Shauna, you need some time to process the way you feel before you speak on it. That's a way for me to talk to God. I don't know who your outlet is, but for me, I have a great relationship with God. God is my higher power. I don't know what you call yours. I call mine God. It just seems really simple. I don't really think that God cares what we call him, <laughs> him, her, it, whatever. I don't think the name matters. I think what matters is that there is a source of energy and love that exists that we can tap into at any time that reminds us that we are loved, that reminds us that we are here to learn and to grow and that we are doing that. We're doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing. We're here to confront these challenges, to see where it is in us that we can become better. Because ultimately what I would like to receive from others is love in the form of forgiveness and acceptance. Another part of our responsibility is to surround ourselves with like-minded individuals. If you don't have people in your life who are working on themselves and working on being a better version of themselves and practicing grace and forgiveness, you might want to seek that out. Pray about it or chant about it or meditate about it. Whatever your method is of connecting with your higher self, go inward and ask the higher power, the universe, whatever your beliefs are, ask the unknown to send you the right people so that you can be cultivating that positivity and that light with a community, whether it's your family or your friends or people you do hobbies with or places you shop or videos you watch or books you read, make sure that you are exposing yourself to like minds and trying your best to stay away from toxic people who are going to just lure you right back into victim mentality. For me, when I talk about a toxic person, it's victim mentality. They're solely focused on what's happening to them, who's causing it, and they're not doing anything to try to see their role in it. And that to me is toxic because we don't wanna be there because when you're there, you are in a prison and it is your own prison and nobody can get you out of there but you. So back to the topic of self-soothing. When it comes to self-soothing, it is up to us to figure out what are the right questions to ask ourselves 
What are the right tools to implement when we're being triggered so that we can be calm, we can soothe ourselves, and we can go into that space of this is happening for me, not to me. Where's the lesson in this? What do I need to see that I'm not seeing? Where are my blind spots? Now, look, I don't want this to be like, it's always me. I'm all, always the one messing up. It's not that. Sometimes these challenges show up just so we can see how far we've come. Just so we can see ourselves giving grace. So we can see ourselves being loving instead of always being the one that needs the love. It needs to be understood. It needs to be heard. I do believe that as we start to heal ourselves, that we will attract more healed people into our lives. And that's a good barometer as to where we are on our healing journey. Make sure that during this journey, you are giving yourself a lot of compassion, a lot of forgiveness, a lot of room to make mistakes. Because remember, being alive and making mistakes go hand in hand. You cannot learn and grow and become the master of yourself without making mistakes. And every mistake is showing up for you. It's a nugget of wisdom right there on your lap or served up on a silver platter. Here's one big fat mistake. This is the lesson. What are you going to do with it? That's our power moment. We get to decide, do I keep making that mistake or do I change it? That's your power moment. It's such a great moment. So do your best to realize that mistakes are a great place for us to level up. And we're not leveling up without them. And if we don't see our mistakes, we can't fix them. Ugh, no thank you. I did that long enough. I want to see them all. Ooh, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> but like little by little, how about that? <laughs> I can only handle so much transformation and enlightenment at once. <laughs> I love you all so much. I believe that we can change this world. We can make this world a better place, starting with ourselves. See you next time. One love. If it gets too